I'm Mohammed Hassan. I'm medical director at Center for Interventional Endoscopy, Advent Health Orlando. I will be talking about my experience with TJFQ190V Duodenoscope, how it is different from 180 scope, what are its key features, and how I have used it to perform safe and effective ERCP. The Olympus TJFQ190V Duodenoscope improves upon previous reprocess techniques with efficient design that provides easy access for brushing and flushing. Also, the single-use distal cover is designed for easy setup and improved visualization of the distal end, which in turn provides access for manual cleaning and reprocessing. The TJFQ190V utilizes a square image and 15 degree backward viewing that allows for more optimized and expanded field of view. 180 scope on the other hand had more horizontal view, but this expanded vertical view is important to aid in safe and atraumatic cannulation Obviously, it is important to know where the papillary orifice is, but it is equally important to know how large is the intraduodenal part of the papilla, how many folds are there, where does the papilla meet the duodenal wall, because that would determine your axis of cannulation. TJFQ190V duodenoscope has high force transmission that enables a one-to-one -one transfer of pushing and rotating forces to the distal end of the duodenoscope, thus improving ergonomics and scope responsiveness. At the same time, it is flexible enough to form a loop while traversing through difficult anatomy like J-shaped stomach. In my experience, it is safe to make an alpha loop to reach the second part of the duodenum with this scope. Short scope position and reduction of the loop is achieved by simultaneous retraction and clockwise rotation of the shaft of the duodenoscope. I will show this uh, in another video during the latter part of the presentation. TGFQ190V duodenoscope has a dual locking mechanism at the distal end that locks and holds guide wires, and this mechanism works for both long and short wire accessories. Now moving towards the procedural aspects of ERCP, there are different components of an ERCP procedure that includes passage of the scope, then getting into the best position to cannulate the papilla, studying the papilla after cannulation performing sphincterotomy, wire stabilization, use of accessories to perform therapy. I will talk about all these in next uh, three videos. In this video, I show my experience of performing ERCP with TJF190 duodenoscope. I advanced the scope gently through the esophagus. Once I reach the stomach, I insufflate the stomach and follow the gastric folds towards the antrum of the stomach. Once I reach the pylorus, I let the pylorus in sunset view to enter into the duodenal bulb. From duodenal bulb, I follow the lumen of the duodenum to reach the second part of the duodenum. Once into the second part of the duodenum, scope is rotated clockwise and retracted to get into short scope position and to study the papilla. Obviously, it is important to know where the papillary orifice is, it is equally important to know the rest of the shape of the papilla. Is it bulgy? Is it flat? How many folds are there? Where does papilla meet the duodenal wall? Then I draw this imaginary line from the papillary orifice towards the center of the papilla where it meets the duodenal wall. Here you can see that I'm showing that imaginary line this imaginary line would determine my axis of cannulation. In this ERCP procedure, I'm using clever cut sphincter tome and Visiglide wire. 
to cannulate the papilla. I use wire tape to engage the papillary orifice. When it is engaged, then I advance the wire gently into the bile duct. When it follows the trajectory of the bile duct, I advance that wire further into the intrahepatic ducts, then cholangiogram is performed. Cholangiogram shows a filling defect in the distal part of the bile duct, which is a stone. Then sphincterotomy is performed. The direction of sphincterotomy is same as the axis of cannulation from the papillary orifice towards the center of the papilla in the direction where it meets the duodenal wall. Once the sphincterotomy is performed, then stone can be retrieved. In this video, I show how in my experience it is safe to form a loop into the stomach to traverse challenging anatomy like J-shaped stomach to reach the duodenum. Scope is advanced through the esophagus into the stomach. After reaching the stomach, instead of following the fold towards the antrum of the stomach, it starts forming a loop into the body of the stomach to reach the antrum. High force transmission property of the scope along with flexibility of the scope allows safe formation of alpha loop in my experience. After reaching the duodenum, to achieve short scope position, the reduction of the loop is achieved by simultaneous retraction and clockwise rotation of the shaft of the duodenal scope. Once short scope position is achieved, then cannulation is attempted. Again, in this video, I'm using a clever cut sphincter tone and busy glide wire to cannulate the bile duct. Once the papilla is engaged and cannulation is achieved, wire is moved gently into the bile duct. Then cholangiogram is performed. Which shows filling defects suggestive of stones. Then sphincterotome is retrieved back to perform the sphincterotomy. Once safe and effective sphincterotomy is performed. Sphincter tone is removed. And then an extraction balloon is loaded over the wire advanced into the bile duct and balloon sweep is performed. As you can see, The stones are retrieved from the bile duct.
then a second sweep is performed to confirm there's no remaining stone Once the bile duct is clean, the wire and the balloon are retrieved and then if the wheels are locked to perform ERCP, the wheels are unlocked and scope is gently retrieved back. Once into the body of the stomach, suction and aspiration of air is performed. then scope is retrieved. This is a, a patient uh, who had a, a bile leak and had an attempted ERCP performed at uh, outside facility. However, they were not able to cannulate the bile duct. They placed a pancreatic stent and then patient was uh, uh, referred to us. As you can see, uh, cannulation was uh, achieved with the uh, clever cut uh, sphincter tome and visiglide wire. Then sphincterotomy is uh, uh, being performed. Cholangiogram did show leakage of uh, contrast at the cystic duct stump area. After the sphincterotomy is performed, uh, sphincter tome is removed. Here you can see the wire is properly initially locked. Then I release the elevator and the wire moves to the left side of the elevator. In this case, if you maneuver the wire, it would not be properly locked and it will move in and out. Uh, what I do to uh, overcome this challenge is, I just simply release the elevator that brings the wire back into the center of the elevator for me to lock it again. Uh, I am demonstrating that uh, a few times Wire is not uh, a slipping that many times. I'm doing this uh, mainly for the purpose of demonstration. And once the wire is stable and locked, then you can uh, pass the accessories over it. Sometimes with the accessories, same thing could happen. They may slip off the elevator to the right or left and simply follow the same mechanism by lowering the elevator or releasing the elevator and bringing the accessory to the center of the elevator and that would solve the problem. If just by simply releasing the elevator does not solve the problem and if a uh, wire happens to be on the left side of the elevator, then re you release the elevator and gently move your shoulders anti-clockwise. That moves the elevator and the scope anti-clockwise and the wire could be recaptured into the elevator. And if it happens to slip to the right side of the elevator, then you move your shoulders clockwise. That moves the scope clockwise while the elevator is uh, released and bring the wire back over the elevator and then you can recapture the wire uh, as demonstrated in this video. Once the wire is locked and then you uh, can advance the accessories over the wire. In this case, stent assembly is being advanced. And if the stent assembly slips to the right or the left, follow the same maneuver by releasing the elevator and recapturing by bringing the accessory to the center of the elevator. The stent is being advanced into the bile duct. Once the distal end of the stent is seen, then wire. Is removed and then the stent is deployed. Once the stent is deployed, then stent assembly is removed. If wheels of the scope were locked, those are unlocked, then scope is gently moved back into the stomach. 
and air and fluid is aspirated by keeping the scope into the center of the stomach and then scope is removed.